the tricuspid valve is as important as the mitral valve and is as frequently diseased as, as the mitral valve. We are estimating in, in Europe more than three millions of patients uh, suffering from significant tricuspid regurgitation. And there the unmet need is even larger because many of these patients do not receive treatment for good reasons because a surgical risk is very high, especially if we talk about a patient who experienced already an open heart surgery, then mortality can be as high as 20%. And therefore, we need additional treatment options to tackle tricuspid regurgitation. Medical therapy doesn't work really nicely, so it is very attractive to, to look at catheter-based methodology to treat TR. Tricuspid regurgitation is, is almost in all cases, in 70 to 90% of the cases, functional TR. So that means the leaflets are okay, but there is annular dilation and therefore the leaflets do not meet anymore, there is malcooptation. Meaning the annular dilation is also the key pathology in tricuspid regurgitation. And the cardioband can be used to reduce this annular dilation on the tricuspid side. Even easier than on the mitral space because you don't even have to go transeptal, you just need a venous puncture and then you are right there and can implant the anchors. There is a, a study which we just finished, dry repair study, and we are in the process of publishing this study. It's also a core lab adjudicated a study in 30 patients with follow-up. And we have seen, uh, first of all, that it is very safe. Uh, Periprocedurally, there was uh, no fatal event uh, on the day of the procedure. Um, so that is the first very good and important information. Second information is um, feasibility. We achieved to implant the cardioband in every patient. And third point is, of course, uh, efficacy. And that looks pretty good because we were able to reduce all the quantitative measures of TR, such as arrow, vena contractor, and at the end of the day, we reduce tricuspid regurgitation in the vast majority of the patient. Clinical benefit from, from treating tricuspid regurgitation seems to be very, very significant. We have seen um, heart failure symptoms to be reduced uh, by the New York Heart Association scale, but also we looked at exercise capacity with six-minute walking tests, at self-assessment of the patient, and also look at the occurrence of edema. And all these parameters were significantly or highly significantly reduced by implanting the cardioband, which reduced tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, one of the major um, concerns is recurrency of tri uh, tricuspid regurgitation. So far, we have data uh, for 30 days and also for six months, and we didn't see any recurrency of tricuspid regurgitation over time. So, small patient group, just a limited follow up period, of course, but it looks very promising. In terms of uh, patient selection for, for this device, uh, again, you need an annular dilation. Um, there are some, some, of course, some things to be considered. You have to have enough tissue to get the anchors in. The proximity of the right coronary artery should be not too near. But in most of the patients, this is not a problem. But we do a CT scan in every patient in order to exclude this upfront. Perspectives in the tricuspid field for, for, for the cardioband, uh, uh, again, as we appreciated already, it's an undertreated disease, it's a very frequent disease, it comes with high mobility and mortality loads, and therefore we need additional treatment options. Open heart surgery is not a treatment option for this very sick patient group because mortality rates are, are very, way too high. And therefore we need minimal invasive treatment options and one good option, and it's in fact the first option being uh, reported, being published very soon and has received CE mark is the cardioband in the tricuspid space. Mm -hmm.